I'll just say yes. You lead, you lead the way. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of what it means for me to say. This life you gave, this life you gave, is not my own. It's not my own. I'm trusting you, God. I'm trusting you. why I say
someone willing to say yes to Jesus this morning? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's trying to do something you don't feel like it. But peace only comes when you say yes to him. Sometimes you want to reason it out, but it just still doesn't make sense. Yes, Lord. You can't you keep being troubled. You keep being troubled. Yes, Lord. But the only time to have peace is to let go and let him have his way. This morning, lift up your hands and say, Jesus, I say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your will, I say yes. Yes, Lord. To this process, I say yes, oh God. Yours, my life is yours. So what do you want me to do? I say yes. yes Lord. Oh, Yes or no? Yes, but this morning, Lord. there's fresh grace released to you to yes, say yes. Lord. There's fresh grace released upon you to say yes this morning. Yes, Let's just lift our hands and worship God this morning. Take a minute to thank Him for who He is. Take a minute to worship Him. Tell Him, Lord, my life is yours. Everything I have, everything I own is yours, Lord God. And I ask that you fill me in return. I ask that you lift me in return. Lord God, fill our hearts, fill our lives, fill our spirits. Kashanda yarada basha tu tu broku tu yan diri diri kiti. Father, we say yes to your will this morning. We say yes to that which you have planned for us. We will say yes to that which you have spoken. We will say yes to that which you are going to give to us. We will say yes, Lord God, to all that we have heard from you. Father, today we come before you and our spirit connects to your spirit. Our lives connect to your life. Our minds connect to your spirit, Lord Jesus. And we ask that you direct us. That, Father, this week shall be a week in which we hear directly from you. That this week will be a week in which you will guide every step we take. Lord God, we want to say yes to what you have said. Lord, we ask that you indeed begin to direct us step by step, minute by minute, wisdom to wisdom to achieve great things in the name of Jesus. Lord, this shall be a week in which your people shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. It shall be a week in which they will receive answers to prayers that have been asked for, as asked for for a long time. It shall be a week in which we shall see the results of the things we have been waiting for. Father, we say yes to you, Lord God. Yes to receive from you. Yes to receive from your throne. Yes to all that you have planned for us. Lord, this shall be the week of answers. It shall be the week of results. It shall be the week, Lord God, in which we shall see great things in the name of Jesus. We testify, Lord God, ahead of time because you have heard, you have answered those prayers we prayed this morning asking from you. We thank you because you said yes. And when you say yes, we say yes. And when our yes connects to your yes, nothing will stop us. This week, nothing will stop your people in Jesus' name. This week there shall be no blockage to their miracle in the name of Jesus. This week there shall be answers to their prayers in the name of Jesus. This week they shall receive from your throne, Lord God, in new ways, new anointing, new results. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give God a hand this morning and please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to welcome our Archbishop back to town. Can we give our Archbishop a, a hand? God bless you, ma. We, were, we thank God for your life. We welcome you back home. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God this morning. Amen. Last week we began talking about how to create opportunities for yourself, how to indeed receive the blessing which we pray for. And we talked and shared a few things which I will continue this week because I really believe that the ember months for you are going to be ember months of opportunities. There will be months of blessings. There will be months of increase. There will be months in which you will see God do new things like never before in Jesus' name. All those people, people fearing ember months, they can fear their own. For me, I'm going to receive opportunities in the ember months in Jesus' name. Think about it. I mean, everything from the year has been culminating to this point. How can you not be blessed in the last three months? Does that make any sense that you have a whole year in the last three months, trouble will now come. No, it doesn't make sense. I've been working for the year. I've been blessing and thinking and doing things throughout the year. So for these last three months, I have no choice but to receive blessings. You have no choice but to receive blessings in Jesus' name. The ember months have been months of blessings for you. Months of opportunities for you. Months of grace for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You have no choice but to be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. By the time December 31st comes round, you must be giving a testimony. Hallelujah. You must be shouting with joy. Amen. You must be singing to God of, the God of Amen. blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. So dividends, if it's going to be that dividends, way. Dividends, dividends exactly. Dividends. Think about it. She just mentioned dividends. If I've been investing into a company, putting money every month, if I've been investing into my cooperative every month, how can they say in the last three months of the year is when things will go down? You have been investing. You have been thinking. You have been planning. You have been working. The last three months must be the months in which you will receive the blessing of the full year. So talk to your friends about the blessing of the ember months. The grace of what God does to culminate your year. He says, you, he will crown my year with goodness. He will crown my year with blessing. All paths will lead to my door because I must be blessed. Is that you? Is that you? Then all paths of blessings will lead to your door in the name of Jesus. All paths of grace will lead to your door in the name of Jesus. All paths of increase will lead to your door in the name of Jesus. He will crown your year with goodness. He will crown your year with increase. He will crown your year with the Amen. grace that has never been Amen. seen before in the name of Jesus. I when they ask who, is, who has been blessed by God, they will point to you. Amen. When they Amen. want to know how good God is, they will point to you. Amen. When they want to say who is a child of God that has been blessed oh, this year, they yes, will point to you is. in the name of Jesus. He will crown my year yes. with goodness. He will it's crown your me. year with goodness. He will crown everything you have worked for Hallelujah. with his blessings in the name of Amen. Jesus. The blessings of the Lord make rich in 2017 and he will add no sorrow to it in the name of Jesus. Amen. These last three months shall be months in which you shall see God give you in increase. In the name of Jesus. You will see yourself giving testimonies. You will see yourself saying amen to the prayers you prayed in January amen. because you are seeing the answers Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you believe that, say it loud, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. 
Matthew 25, 14. We began speaking from here last week and we're going to continue because I believe that we are entering the months of opportunities. Not because people are going to give them to us, but because we're going to create them. And this morning, I'm going to share a few things. I'm going to teach by God's grace. And as I teach, I want you to speak words of prayer over your life, over your family, and you will see the results. I pray I don't shout today because I don't want to shout. I want to teach. So let's go. Matthew 25, verse 14. Thank you for the sound. It's excellent today. I can hear it very well. God bless you. Matthew 25, verse 14. It says, again, the kingdom of God coming back. I'm reading from the NIV. The kingdom of God shall be like a man who goes on a journey, who called his servants and trusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one one bag, each according to his ability. I read this last week and I want to read it again because I want you to understand that God has given each and every one of us something in our hands. There is something in your hand that you have not seen yet, but you are going to see this week, this month, and the end of this year in the name of Jesus. God, the master gave to each one according to his ability. We said last week that nobody has been given nothing. Everyone has been given something. The question becomes then, what do we do with that which we have been given? Each of us has been given life. Each of us has been given the wisdom of God, and that wisdom shall cause you to do something great this month, this year, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You have something, and beyond the something, you have ability. You have something in your mind, but beyond that, you have the ability to cause it to grow. Now, I'm going to spend the next few weeks teaching about creating opportunities because we talked, we have been told that our theme for this next year that we're entering into is that we are empowered for success. So I'm going to share with you from the Word of God how you are empowered for success, and then we will go into practical steps that will empower you indeed for success because you have no choice but to be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, we began by saying you must connect to your creator because your success is tied to your creator. And then we shared from 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1 verse 3. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 where it says that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Or he has given us everything that is necessary for life and for godliness. Then we ended it by saying, because God has made us partakers of his divine nature, or he has made us a part of his essential nature. I closed with that last week, saying that you have the nature of God. I want to begin this week then by saying this. If we have God's nature, what does that mean for our success? If we have God's nature... What does that mean for your success in your business? What does it mean for your success in your job? What does it mean for your success in your professional environment? What does it mean for your success in anything you can think about, your family, your finances? If you have God's nature, then it means that you have the ability to create something out of nothing. Let me explain. In the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created. But it says the earth was without form and void. In other words, even though it was created, there seemed to be nothing there. And so many of us look at our bank accounts and you say, the bank account has been created, but there seems to be nothing there. Not you, I know, I know not you, because you're all, you're all wealthy in Jesus' name. Some of us look at our financial situation. It has been created, but there seems to be nothing to it. We can't boast about having 
100,000 in your account. You can't boast about having something that you can fall back on. That will change before the end of this year in Jesus' name. I didn't hear you say it loud enough, amen. It will change before the end of this year in Jesus' name. The nature of God gives us the ability to create something out of nothing. Our biggest example is Archbishop B.A. Dahosa. He began his life, as we have been told so many times, with what seemed like nothing. He was born poor. He, wrote, he grew up poor. He didn't go to school until he was 18. Didn't wear his first shoes until he was 16 or 18. He had almost nothing. He told us that he was so poor that even poor people called him poor. That is having nothing. But because he had the nature of God, he was able to create something out of nothing. We are standing this morning in a sanctuary that was built by a man who was born with nothing. We testify about a university, a hospital, several hundred schools, a Bible school, all built by a man who was born with nothing. When his life ended, he had enough to leave an inheritance for his children's children. I don't, and I don't mean just biological children. I mean spiritual children, children that he didn't even know about, people that he blessed their lives without knowing their names. That was a man who had nothing at first, but ended with something because he had the nature of God inside of him. This one, I want you to understand this. You have God's nature. And if God could do that with one man, God can do even more with you in the name of Jesus. There was nothing to his name. His name meant nothing. But today, that name, Idahosa, means something. As he raised God's kingdom, God added to him day by day, week by week, month by month. And by the time of his death, he had enough to leave a legacy. You will leave a legacy in Jesus' name. He had nothing to begin with. But at the end of his life, he lacked nothing. Your testimony will be the same in Jesus' name. You will lack nothing in the name of Jesus. You will have everything that God has spoken to you in the name of Jesus. Out of nothing, God created. Out of nothing, Idahosa created. Out of nothing, you were created in Jesus' name. So I want you to think this morning that you can create opportunities for your success to show up. These three men were given bags of gold. And they had to go and create an environment in which their success would show up. The one who had five was able to create an environment. And so when opportunities came, he was able to cash in on them. So here's the thing. The best opportunities are the ones that you create yourself. No one will come again to give you anything else. Because God has already told you he has given you everything you need for life and godliness, which means that all you need has already been put inside of you. What next do you do? That's the question. I dealt this morning in the first service with the subject of how to create in our environments. If you can, please join us in the first service. We'll continue talking this way. I want to repeat it this morning. I will continue and talk about how does God create? Because if we have God's nature and God can create something out of nothing, then we need to understand how does God do it so we can also do something out of nothing. That bank account that is empty right now shall be filled in Jesus' name. Not by magic, but by doing something. You see, the Bible tells us that God says, I will bless the work of your hands, not the amen of your mouth. That doesn't mean you shouldn't say amen. You can say amen, shall we? But you see, it's not by saying amen that he blesses it. It's by what you do with the things he has given to you. I told you that nobody has nothing to begin with. We all have something. At the very minimum, you have life. If you have life, you have enough to create something. So how do we do it? Here we go. The first thing you must do is this. God observes and then God speaks. The Bible says that 
God saw the situation. The earth was without form, it was without void, it was, it was void. In other words, he had created it, but it wasn't good. What do we see in our lives that we have created, that we have made, but it's not good? We want to make it better. So he observed that there was darkness covering the face of the earth. So his spirit began to hover across the waters. Then what did he do next? The Bible says that he spoke. Now it was dark. There was no form. There was no sky. There was no, not a thing that resembled what we see today. That's like many of our lives today. We think it's empty. We think that what we have is nothing. I was talking to some people this week and they were saying that they have tried different things. They just have nothing. And you don't want to get to the point where you think you have nothing. I want to speak to you today that you have something that you can do. So what did God do then? He observed and he spoke. Then he looked at the future and said, okay, I see what I want. And so he desired to create the opposite of what he saw. What do you see today? What is it about your life that you have that you're not happy with? I want you to picture now the opposite of what you are seeing. My account has zero naira inside. The opposite of that is what? 10,000? 10 million? 1 billion? What is the opposite of where you are right now? It is, not, it is not necessarily financial, but it could be financial. But you must begin by saying, where am I right now? I observe it. And I want to create the opposite of what I see, of what I'm not happy with. Then you go and start to create the parts that will make a whole. How do I mean? The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that God is the God who sees the end from the beginning. If you want to create an opportunity in your life to be successful, you must see the end where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve? What do you want the things to look like when it is done? I want to get married. I must think what kind of man must I be to attract the woman I want to marry. I want to, I want, I want to be wealthy in terms of finances. I must think what can I do to create those finances? What can I do that is legal? What can I do that will get me there? I want us to begin to think now, where are you right now? What is the opposite? What is the end point? What is it that you want to create that will be the opposite of where you are now? Because you see, for me to get from where I am to where I want to be, I must create something. And we say that we lack opportunity. We hear the cliches that opportunity only knocks once. But if you are a person that is creating an environment, Opportunity will knock again and again and again. Why? Because opportunity knocks on doors. So if I were you, I would start creating doors. So that the environment shall come. What happened to God? God's nature says that he takes nothing and makes something. So what did God do then? He said, I want to make the opposite. So he began to put the parts together. Let me explain. God saw the future and wanted to create an earth in which mankind could dwell and live. So what did he do? Void and empty is one side. The way the earth is, where the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, that's the opposite. So he's seen void, he's seen empty, he's seen darkness, but he wants to create an earth that is full. So he begins to speak and make the parts appear. What about your future have you seen? I want you now to think, what are the parts I need to make that future appear? What are the things you need? For God, he began by saying, let there be light. And there was light. That was one part. Then he said, okay, let there be seas. Let, let the sea separate itself from the land. And it happened the way he said. He said, okay, let there be dry land. Upon the land then, he said, let there be trees, vegetation, shrubs. Do you see how everything is building upon each other? He doesn't just say, bah, and everything happens. He could say it, but he did not just say it at once. He spoke the parts to make the end achievable. 
I want to ask you this morning, what is the end product you want to achieve? You must begin to create the individual parts to make it happen. Let there be trees, he said. Then he said, let there be the sun and the moon, so that the sunlight could make the trees have photosynthesis to create again. Am I making sense now? You must think about your life. What can I create that will cause the next thing to be created? Then he said, let that be the birds, the fish, the animals. And then finally he said, let us make man in our image. The thing that would eventually make everything make sense, make sense, he spoke into being. God sees the end from the beginning. He evaluates it, and then he creates it. I want to ask you this morning, what is it about your life that you see now that you're not happy with? Then take the end point and begin to create from there, work backwards to get what you are looking for. It is very possible for God to do for you what you are thinking about, what you are dreaming about. But if you don't visualize it, it will not happen. Opportunity is not something that you wait for. It is something you create. Opportunity will knock for those who have built doors. So you must think then, how do I become an architect of opportunity? And I shared this morning about how you can create opportunities by doing several things. But I want you to just think with me, imagine with me, dream with me this morning. What would be the opposite of where you are today? And how do I create the parts that will make it happen? Let me just illustrate quickly with you. Stanley, help me out for a minute. You've been sweating. Take off your jacket for a second. Take off your tie for a second. And we're going to illustrate quickly how you can visualize where you want to go in the future. Speak it into being. Talk to God to make it happen. And then it will. Before you woke up this morning, sir, you had an image in mind. Before you came to church and got dressed, you had an image in mind. Now, I won't make you take off, take off all your clothes. Just stand here. You just do that. You can, <laughs> but he won't. Hallelujah. We're in church. Hallelujah. So this man now knows that he wants to come to church dressed in the suits. He wants to come to church in his tie. He wants, look, he wants to look as good as he can. So he begins not with that thing fully there, but he has already seen what he wants to do. So when he wakes up, Take off your shoes, yes, you want to do that? Okay. All right, thank you, sir. When he wakes up, the image he has waking up is not the same image you see in church, is it? Because when he wakes up, he's in his boxers or his singlet, as you call it in Nigeria, undershirt, anything you want to call it, nightgown, whatever you wear, whatever you wear. So we don't wake close to sleep. I'll pray for you in Jesus' name. <laughs> PJs. This is PJs. Thank you. But then, as he wakes up, he has an idea of where he's going. So he says, okay, today I'm going to church. Today I must look good. So then he gets up, and he goes and he takes a shower. And he cleanses the old thing from yesterday with the new thing. So he showered, right? He showered yesterday. Hallelujah. Amen. So people don't shower, oh, God will help you in Jesus' name. <laughs> but he cleanses himself. That's how God does with you. When God, first of all, sees you, the final image is nothing like the one he starts with. But he loves you too much to leave you in the state he meets you. So he brings you in, cleanses you, Removes the old, because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. So he removes everything about you that is undesirable. But yet, you still look nothing like the end product. 
So then you get up, you shower, you are clean. You put on clean underwear, clean shirt, everything. You begin with your singlets, your undershirts, then your underwear, then your trousers, then your shirts. Am I correct? Yes. If you're a woman, you do the same thing similarly. But your end product is still what you are looking for. I told you God saw the earth empty, formless. But he saw the end product. Where we say the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You saw what you want to look like. In your mind, you saw it. When you woke up, it didn't look like it. But as you clean yourself up, one by one, you pull the parts together. Your shirts, your trousers, your socks. Now, please bring me his tie. Somebody help me put it on him. See, the tie is one part of the final equation. So you also must begin to see, what am I looking for? What is the opposite of where I am today? I must see it. If you can see it, God can bring it to you. But if you do not see it in your mind, you don't visualize it, you don't think to yourself, how will I get there from here? You keep on praying, God, just give me everything at once. It won't happen. God could have spoken the entire earth to be at once, but he began by putting the parts together, one by one, step by step, precept upon precept. You also must do the same thing too. See your end product, start from there and work backwards to get what you are looking for. Help me put this tie on him, sir. Well, bend down, small, because someone not as tall or as blessed as you are, with the gift of heights. So then, as you begin to say, God, I want this next step. As you do that, God stands to make it happen for you. I'm going somewhere, I'll explain to you in a minute, and I will close as we course correct. So his tie is on because he has seen his end product. Then he puts on his shocks, great. Then he gets his jacket. And now you see the end product is beginning to resemble what he has already seen in his mind. And put on the nice pocket square the way it is, the nice that. Then we get the shoes on next. And step by step, because he has already seen it, he has spoken it, he begins to make it happen one by one. The shoes come on one foot at a time. And the other one comes on again, the other foot at a time again. And finally, the end product now looks different from the beginning. But it takes parts to make a whole happen. You must see where you are going first. So many of us are saying, God, give us one billion naira. But I have not seen the parts that I must do step by step to make it happen. This is where God's wisdom comes in because it says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives us liberally. That means nyafu nyafu. Plenty. So what you see that is the opposite of where you are today, God can give you the wisdom to get there because he gives you the power to create. We are partakers of his divine nature. If you ask of him, he will give to you. Simple. But we are so caught up comparing ourselves with what we don't have. I told you last week, the man who had nothing, who had won, sorry, was saying, I don't have anything, so let me just protect what I have. After all, you gave that one five. You gave that one two. You only gave me one. You are a wicked man. But what he should have been doing was not comparing and measuring what he had. He should have been maximizing what he had. Stop comparing yourself with the man next door. Stop measuring what God has given you and start maximizing what God has given to you. I wish we could get that into our minds. T.D. Jakes said, said that to us a few weeks ago. He said, don't measure what God gives to you. 
maximize it because nobody has been given nothing everybody has something if i maximize what i have i will get what i'm thinking about so the end product now comes out looking different like a mod jesus christ a model take a picture of this man let me stand next to him so i can say, say, say. where the camera okay yeah come here come 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 but the end product looks different from the beginning yeah let me pause well here we go let me close with this your end product is your purpose your end product is where you want to go your end product is where you are heading towards now if you've ever used in your phone or your app in your phone i, I said this the other day if you have your, your smartphone there there's an app called google google maps or there's ways the different ones and it has a gps on it what happens is you come in here and you say this is where i want to go put the address and the address now becomes the final destination once you see the final destination everything in your phone every battery source every voice prompt everything in that phone comes together including the gps in your phone and the one in the sky they come together to help you get to your end point because there's a purpose god says to you if you speak what you want to see happen according to his will everything in the physical universe will come together to get you to your purpose when he says all things work together for my good it doesn't just mean only the prayer i pray in church it means everything the work of your hands the thoughts of your mind the things you say the things you do the things you speak into being will work together for your good because that is your purpose for those who are called according to his what purpose what is the purpose of where you want to get to what do you want to achieve with your life nobody has nothing to begin with and so your phone then everything inside there comes together to make sure you get to that destination as you begin the journey if you take a wrong turn the phone the gps will course correct you tell you please turn back left turn back this way and get back on your original path it will keep on pushing you in that direction where you are going is something like this you see your end point if on the way you make a wrong turn god himself will course correct you say no you are going there he will bring the forces of the entire universe to your disposal to get you to the end point what you have seen what you have spoken what you want to achieve because his purpose will prevail so that's why i laugh when they tell me that some demon is pursuing them oh they carried my name to kovum they say one the all altars against you come and put them down there's no altar against me that can alter me from the direction that God has spoken. You will get to your purpose in the name of Jesus. You will get to your end point in the name of Jesus. You can create out of nothing if you speak according to God's purpose. Your life shall be great in Jesus' name. Your life will achieve in Jesus' name. Your life will do what God has spoken it to be in the name of Jesus. Every time you take a wrong turn, God will cause correct you and get you back to his purpose in the name of Jesus. You are going somewhere to happen in the name of Jesus. You are going to achieve in the name of Jesus. When you see it, speak it and bring it to being in the name of Jesus. Nothing will distract you when you see where you are going. God bless you, sir. Let's stand to our feet and pray today. I want you to, to take what I just shared with you. I hope, hope you heard it this morning. I want you to see your end point. I want you to see your purpose that you are going towards. I want you to see where you want yourself to be. In the same way God spoke for this earth to be full with his goodness. He saw the earth so much so that David could say, how magnificent are your works, O God. He saw the earth that was nothing, that was void. 
so much so that they could say the cattle on the thousand hills are yours complete opposite from where he was that's how your life can be in jesus name a complete 180 degree turn from where you are right now is possible in the name of jesus you must begin to see it you must begin to speak it according to his will in the same way idahosa went from zero to surplus you will go from zero to surplus in jesus name you will go from nothing to something in the name of jesus you will go from where you are to what god has spoken for you in the name of jesus see your end point begin to put the parts together it is possible i will tell you how in the name of jesus but it is possible to create the environment for your success this morning i want you to take a minute speak to god about your end points speak to god about where you want to end up speak to god about where you are right now see where you are observe it and then see the opposite and begin to say god Bring the parts together. Bring me together in the name of Jesus. Bring what you have spoken about me to happen in the name of Jesus. Put me on the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Put me on the path to achieve great things. Lord God, take me from where I am to where you want me to be. I must achieve that which you have said because you have spoken it. It is the purpose of God that will prevail. It is the purpose of God that will come to pass. What you have seen, God will do. Begin to make it happen. Begin to speak it. Get the parts together. Do what you need to do and begin to speak. Take a minute. Talk to God this morning. Talk to God this morning. If I said shout and scream and kill every devil, somebody will be shouting. But that's not what it is. Speak for your life. Begin to think, how can I invest into my life? How can I invest into what I've seen? How can I invest into what God has spoken about me? It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. See the opposite of where you are right now and speak it into being. Let God bring it into your mind. Let God bring it into your heart, into your spirit. Begin to create it. Begin to make it happen because God himself shall cause you to become that which he has said. in the name of Jesus it is not all messages you go back home and not walk on <laughs>